Hello. Right. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Today is January the 8th, and my name is Happy Aisha. So the thing is, I've decided today to read some children's stories to you. They're not from me. They're from already existing publishers and authors. Uh, I'm in a little bit of a giggly mood, so I'm going to try to focus. But if I do get the giggles occasionally, bear with me. So I'm going to start with, and of course, good morning, Kelly. I'm going to start with a book called The Story of the Little Mole Who Knew It Was None of His Business. Does anybody know this book? <laughs> I th it's it's child appropriate. Um, it does make me giggle. It's by Werner Holtzfart and Wolf L. Bruch, and it's from David Bennett Books. <clears throat> so here we go. This is all very exciting. One day, the little mole poked his head out from underground to see whether the sun had already risen, and then it happened. It looked as. <laughs> It looked a little like a sausage, and the worst thing was that it landed right on his head. How mean, cried the little mole. Who has done this on my head? But he was so short-sighted that he couldn't see anyone around. <laughs> Good morning, Simone. Good morning, Mark. Did you do this on my head? He asked the dove who was flying past. Me? No, how could I? I do it like this, she answered. And splish, splish, a moist white blob landed on the ground right next to the little mole. His right leg was splashed with white. Did you do this on my head? He asked the horse who was grazing in the pasture. Me? No! How could I? I do it like this. And flump, plump, five big fat horsey apples plopped down within a hair's breadth of the mole. He was very impressed. Did you do this on my head? He asked the hare. Me? No, no. How could I? How could I? I do it like this, answered the hare. And rat a tat tat, 15 little round beans shot past the mole's ears. He saved himself with a daring leap. <laughs> Did you do this on my head? He asked the goat, who had been dreaming a little. Me? No, how could I? I do it like this, she replied. And plippity plop, a pile of toffee coloured little balls tumbled on the grass. Blink, 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 blink. Blippity plop, 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 blippity plop. The little mole found them almost appealing. Did you do this on my head? He asked the cow, who was chewing the cud. Me? No, how could I? I do it like this. And kerplush! A big, brownish, green pancake flopped onto the grass. 
just next to the mole. He was very relieved that he hadn't, it hadn't been the cow who had done something on his head. <laughs> Did you do this on my head? He asked the pig. Me? No, how could I? I do it like this, replied the pig. And plop, splat. A little soft brown pile fell onto the grass and the mole held his nose. <laughs> oh. Did you do this on my... He was going to ask again, but it became, as he became closer, he saw only two big, fat, black flies, and they were eating. At last, someone who will be able to help me, thought the mole. Hmm. Who did this on my head? He asked excitedly. Keep nice and still, buzzed the flies. There was a short pause and then, it's clear to us that it was a dog. Finally, the little mole knew who had done the business on his head. Basil, the butcher's dog. Quick as a flash, he climbed back onto Basil's kennel and pling, a tiny black sausage landed right on top of the dog's head. Satisfied at last, the little mole disappeared happily into his underground hole. <laughs> and there he went. The end. So, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was all right for first thing in the morning, but I had fun. So the next book I'm going to read is, I couldn't resist, I'm a twin. Little Miss Twins, Little Miss Twins. You all know the Mr. Men books, right? <clears throat> this is gonna be fantastic. You just couldn't tell them apart. Who? Why? Little Miss Twin? And Little Miss Twin, of course. Who did you think? <laughs> they lived in a funny sort of a country called Tuland. Why was it called Tuland? You'll find out soon enough. morning, Little Miss Twin and Little Miss Twin were having breakfast. Two boiled eggs each. Suddenly there were two knocks at the door and they both went to see who it was. And there, standing on the doorstep, were two postmen. Good morning, morning, they said. People in two land tended to talk like that. Two letters for you, you, they said. Oh, good, good, they said, exclaiming, <laughs> exclaimed the twins. They read their letters while they finished breakfast. <laughs> after reading their letters and after washing up and after making their twin beds, the twins went shopping. To Two Town. On the way, they passed two policemen. Hello, hello, they said. Hmm. 
the twins bought two loaves of bread from Mrs. Twice Slice, the baker's wife. <laughs> then, then they went into Mr. Double Chop, the butcher's, and bought some sausages. Two pounds of your very best sausages, please, please, they said. You'll enjoy these, these, smiled Mr. Double Chop as he wrapped up the sausages in two parcels. Then the twins went home to Two Times Cottage. Oh, didn't I tell you? That was where they lived in Two Land. Mr. Nosy was driving his car back from Happy Land. He had been to see how happy, how Mr. Happy was, stayed the night and was now on his way home. And he was driving along when he noticed a signpost he'd never seen before. It was pointing to Two Land. Hmm, Two Land? He thought to himself, I've never heard of such a place. So, being a nosy fellow, he turned the wheel and set off to find out where Two Land was. He's not called Mr. Nosy for nothing. Nosy. Nosy by name and nosy by nature. <clears throat> it was a very warm day and Mr. Nosy began feeling decidedly thirsty. He stopped at first at the first cottage he came to. Little Miss Twin was outside gardening. I say, called out Mr Nosy, could I possibly trouble you for a glass of water? It's so hot today, he added apologetically. Of course, course, smiled Miss, Little Miss Twin. Come on in, in. Mr Nosy couldn't quite understand why she was talking like that, but he was much too polite to mention the fact. He got out of his car and followed Little Miss Twin up the garden path of Two Times Cottage. After you, you, she said, opening the door for him. Mr. S Mr. Nosy went in and jumped. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I thought you were behind me, he said. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> laughed little Miss Twin. She's my twin twin. That's right, right, giggled the, older, the other little Miss Twin behind him. <laughs> Am I in two land? Mr Nosy asked the twins as he sipped his glass of water. They both giggled. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> and do you always talk like this? He asked. Like what, what? They said. Would you like to stay for lunch, lunch? Asked one of the twins. <laughs> it's sausages, sausages, added the other. <laughs> How very kind, kind, replied Mr. Nosy. <laughs> Their way of talking seemed to be catching, catching. And after lunch, little Miss Twins promised to show Mr. Nosy around Two Land. They took him to the Two Town Art Gallery. There were two of every painting. They took him to Two Town Hall to meet the mayor, Mr. Doublechin. Welcome to Two Town Town he said as he shook Mr. Nosy by the hand. And then the three of them went for tea to the main hotel in Two Town. The Ritz Ritz. They had two cups of tea each and two sandwiches each and two cakes each. Let me pay, said Mr. Nosy. Oh, no, no, they insisted. You're our guest guest, they added.
It was getting quite late when they came out of the Ritz Ritz. I really must be going, said Mr Nosy as he climbed into his car, which he did, parked outside the hotel. Which he had parked outside his hotel. I don't like driving in the dark. Lovely to meet you, Mr Nosy Nosy, said one twin. I hope we meet again soon, soon, said the other. Bye bye, called Mr Nosy as he drove off. Bye bye bye, the twins called after him. <laughs> Two days later, in Tiddletown, which was where he lived, Mr Nosy received a letter. It had a two land postmark on the envelope and two land stamps. He opened it in great excitement. <laughs> Inside the envelope was a parking fine for, his, for parking his car on a double yellow line outside the Ritz Ritz in Two Town, which as you know, is no place to park park. The end. <laughs> loved it, loved it, loved it. Right, <clears throat> this is fun. Hello, Della. Hello, Cloda. Hello, Sally. I'm glad Daisy loved it, Kelly. Right, we have three books left. <laughs> I'm going really super fast here. If anybody needs to have a break, do feel free. Keep hydrated today. Because it makes you sound better and less croaky. I have. Yeah, I think I know which one I'm <laughs> going to go for. My Many Coloured Days by Dr. Seuss? 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 Paintings by Steve Johnson and Lou Fancher. <clears throat> Are you all ready? <laughs> this is actually given to me from my good friend Ramya and it says, PS, this is not a children's book. I'm not sure if it's serious or not. So is anyone sitting here with children? <laughs> with actual children? <laughs> okay, then I'm gonna go ahead because I think homeschooling is starting for some of the children now. Some days are yellow, some days are blue. On different days, I'm different too. You'd be surprised how many ways I change on different colored days. On bright red days, how good it feels to be a horse and kick my heels. Just thinking about kicking my heels. <laughs> <clears throat> on other days, on bright blue days, um, on other days, oh dear. <laughs> on other days, I flap my, <laughs> on other days, I'm other things. On bright blue days, I flap my wings. Some days, of course, feel sort of brown. Then I feel slow and low, low down. Then comes a yellow day and I'm a busy, buzzy bee. Grey day, everything's grey. I watch, but nothing moves today. Then, all of a sudden, I'm a circus seal. On my orange days, that's how I feel. <clears throat> uh, 
Green days, deep, deep in the sea. Cool and quiet fish, that's me. On purple days, I'm sad, I groan, I drag my tail, I walk alone. But when my days are happy pink, it's great to jump and not just think. I think today's a happy day for me, so I'm just going to jump. <clears throat> then comes my black days. And loud I howl. I growl at every cloud. Then comes a mixed up day and wham. I don't know who or what I am. But it all turns out all right, you see. And then I go back to being me. This was a book by Dr. Seuss that will satisfy any mood. And it uses expressive paintings and matches them to your feelings in this imaginative board book. Very interesting. I like it. <coughs> okay. The next book I have is Sometimes I like to curl up in a ball. It's by Vicki Churchill and Charles Fugue. <clears throat> See how this goes. Um, I might just have to read it and then right. Sometimes I like to curl up in a ball so no one can see me because I'm so small. Sometimes I like to jump high as I can to see how much noise I can make when I land. And sometimes I like to scream ever so loud. Not that I'm cross, I just like how it sounds. Sometimes I like to just walk round and round and round and round. I pigeon step, pigeon step till I fall down. <laughs> sometimes I like to stall, sometimes I like to stand as still as a tree and watch everyone rush around me. And sometimes I like to poke out my tongue or pull funny faces. Now that can be fun. <laughs> I better not do that one. <laughs> and sometimes I like to get in a real mess with mud on my feet and my hands and my chest. Sometimes I like to run ever so fast. I sometimes come first, but I sometimes come last. But when the day ends and the sun starts to fall, then I do what I do best of all. I find somewhere soft, somewhere cozy and small. Yeah. 
And that's where I like to curl up in a ball. Life is lots of fun for Wombat. He can shout out loud, step in circles until he falls over, pulls funny faces, and even gets in a muddy mess. But what does a Wombat like to do best of all? Curl up in a little ball. And the last book I have to read to you today is called The Lion Who Wanted to Love by Giles Andrei and David Wojtovic. <clears throat> Deep in the African heartland, way out on the hot, sunny plains, there lived a small lion who didn't fit in, and Leo was the lion's name. Now lions are usually fierce and lions are meant to be strong. But Leo just wanted to love everybody and play with his friends all day long. You worry me, Leo, my darling his mum started saying one day. You'll never survive in the animal world if you don't learn to hunt for your prey. But mummy, said Leo, bewildered, I don't think I quite understand. I'm sure there are plenty of lions that hunt who could kill all the beasts in the land. And besides, when I'm close to zebra, a funny thought comes to my head. Instead of deciding to bite through his skin, I'd much rather hug him instead. <laughs> I have spoken, said Leo's mum sternly. It's up to you now to decide. But if you insist you're not going to hunt, then there's no place for you in our pride. Poor Leo crept off to the jungle, but he hoped with love in his heart. He would learn how to cope in the animal world, though he didn't quite know where to start. <clears throat> that evening, while Leo was sleeping, he woke to the thunder of hooves, and when he looked up from his hair, from his lair, he could see a whole antelope herd on the move. Some leopards were running beside them, surrounded by thick clouds of dust. Leo thought quickly. He jumped to his feet. I must help them, he cried. Yes, I must. And then he caught sight of two injured young ones who couldn't keep up with the bunch. If he didn't help them to try to escape, the leopards would eat them for lunch. Leo led them away back to safety and gave them some food they could eat. He licked their wounds clean till they both became strong and he nursed them back to their feet. The antelope babies kissed Leo and told him, we'll never forget that you saved our lives when we thought we were dead. You're the loveliest lion we've met.
Leo was very excited. His face lit up with a smile. It's fun making friends in the jungle, he thought. Then he lay down and slept for a while. From that day on, Leo decided to run each squeal and each cry. He led little hippos to watering holes and he taught baby birds how to fly. He helped a giraffe who'd been injured and a vulture who'd broken his wing. And even though all of his friends gave him food, he never once asked for a thing. Then, one day beside a wide river, wide, wide river, Leo heard a small animal scream. He ran to the banks and caught sight of a cheetah being swept very quickly downstream. Please help, cried the cheetah in panic. I haven't yet learned how to swim. The waterfall's going to drown me, I'm sure. With a splash, Leo boldly leapt in. He managed to rescue the cheetah and push him quite safe to the side. But as he was trying to scramble ashore, Leo slipped and got caught in the tide. The river was crashing and foaming and Leo let out a loud yelp. The waterfall wasn't too far away now, so the cheetah rushed off to find help. The friends Leo had in the jungle all raced to the bank straight away. They wanted so much to show Leo their thanks. At last, they had now found a way. They climbed on the rocks through the rapids and linked themselves up tail and paw. An elephant wrapped his long trunk round a tree which anchored them to safe to the shore. And when Leo got to the rapids, a lioness dipped down her head. She lifted him great gently across to the bank. You're safe, Leo darling, she said. My son, you're a brave little lion. She spoke in her humblest tone. I was wrong. Now I see love can bring us together. Please, Leo, she said, come back home. You've got to be strong to be different. And when you've got love on your side, you've got the most valuable gift that there is. We want you as king of our pride. The end. So this is about Leo, deep in the African heartland. Way out on the hot sunny plains, there lived a small lion who didn't fit in, and Leo was this lion's name. Now, lions are usually fierce and lions are meant to be strong, but Leo just wanted to love everybody and play with his friends all day long. So that's it folks. I thought this would last an hour, but I finished. <laughs> I'm just thinking if there's another book I could grab, but there isn't because right now I'm downstairs. So 
thank you very much for listening. Um, if you had any favourite books out there, I could read again, let me know. If you enjoyed what you heard, let me know. And if you didn't, don't tell me. <laughs> no, uh, if you watch this on replay, hashtag replay, let me know. Uh, it's great to get some, uh, you know, feedback on uh, on this storytelling. I really enjoyed it. I hope you'll enjoy. <laughs> I hope you'll enjoy the rest of your day. Today's Friday. T G I F. Thank God it's Friday. Enjoy your weekend and enjoy family time. Go out, get some fresh air, and until next time. Bye.